Another form of the art is political satire. You know, I think impressions of people like presidents get such a big reaction because we always put them up on pedestals. But if we can tip over a couple of those pedestals, you know, we can really humanize them. And it was no different with school teachers. I mean, they were figures of authority, right? You know what I used to do in class years ago? I used to drive the teachers bananas. I used to answer them in their voice. And the person you're doing, you know, is always the last to know it, right? So the kids would fall about and the poor teacher would look very bewildered, you know. But I remember we had a homeroom teacher. This was really the first voice I ever did. We had a homeroom teacher. His name was Clarence Bell. And he had a bulbous nose and a lisp. He looked like W.C. Fields. And I remember once he said to me, he said, uh, Richard, stand up, please. Uh, Richard, what's the answer to 4B in your textbook? And I said, uh, Mr. Bell, uh, the answer to 4B is 225 pounds. And he said, that's absolutely correct, Richard. You're not only a brilliant student, but I must say, you have a very fine speaking voice. <laughs> anyway, when I was repeating grade nine for the fourth time, no, I got to tell you, though, the kids got a heck of a kick out of it. But I realized, you know, I couldn't keep doing teachers all my life. I mean, Vegas pays a lot better than high school. So I moved from teachers to politicians. You know, I'm not sure whether I was moving up or moving down. for the governorship of California, lost and then somehow ended up becoming president of the United States. <laughs> now I'm living in seclusion as a beach bum in San Clemente. Uh, most people remember Bibi Rebozo, not me. That's why I always carry the American Express card. <laughs> I use it for almost everything. Uh, payoffs, <laughs> tapes, uh, break-in equipment. Oh, I realize, of course, that it's tougher to get than most cars. But then I've had a hell of a tough life. <laughs> I was Grand Marshal on the impeachment parade. 
wife played golf with Spiro Dum Dum Agnew. I was kicked out of Washington and forced to live on a $10 million mansion in San Clemente. The American Express car. Don't leave office without him. You may have noticed over the years that both impressionists and impersonators will often do the same people. Well, there's nothing unusual about that. Sometimes we find a voice, a star that people enjoy hearing, and everybody wants to do. And you know you're going to get applause when you do the voice of somebody like uh, Paul Anka. Put your head on my shoulder Whisper in my ear, baby Words I wanna hear Tell me That you love me too Put your lips close to mine, dear. Thank you. Great song. Tell it on one. Hold me. I wrote this one when I was three. I'm the lucky one. Hold me. Put your hand on my shoulder. Surprise, I think these guys cannot disguise the stars they mimic. I hark to Johnny Dark, who has a spark and has a gimmick. Bob Anderson, a ton of fun. And Bob sure did me in a sly way. Don't get me wrong, Bob's act is strong. But he didn't write my way. Thank you. And there's more. Their bit is quite a hit, and you'll admit. I'm non-committal, but friends, that's where it ends, cause no one transcends or tops Rich Little, he's just the best by any test, Rich does his thing, the real showbiz way, Frank Gorshin's good, but knock on wood, Rich does it his way for well, what is a man what has he got if not the knack then not a lot rich little almost ruined my life one night he almost fooled my wife <laughs> though rich is fine those kids of mine are mine <laughs> He can have my baby anytime. <laughs> you know, television has created a whole new group of stars. 
And there's no one who can recreate those stars better than our next guest. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Mr. Frank Welker. Television has supplied Impressionists with an incredible amount of material, and I can't think of anybody better to start with than my favorite uncle, Uncle Bill Cosby. Hello. No, I swear, man, can see what happens. See, this is a guy. Hello. Oh, no. See, but here's, here's the way it works. See, now the guy, the guy is cool. See, now he knows where he's going, man, because he told himself. See, and if he tells himself where he's going, then he knows where he's going, because the guy goes to the drawbeds and says to himself, I don't know, which is cool, because he has no idea, man, that the guy's going to have no idea what he's talking about. One of my favorite television couples, Edith and Archie Bunker. Edith Josh! Edith Josh! She should come home from white, there ain't no food on the table, she. <laughs> oh, Archie, I'm so glad you're home! For yourselves, there, dingbatches. I'm starving today. Ain't no food here on the table. She, I'm starving now. Oh, but Archie, last night I dreamed I was in the Miss America contest. Well, that's swell, ain't it? Too? Who was you, Boyd Parks? <laughs> Come over here, let's sing the song now. Boy, the way Glenn Miller played. Songs that made the Like us, we had it made. Those were the days. Thank you. Another one of my favorite television couples, Howard Cosell and Mohammed Ali. Good evening, everyone. This is Howard Cosell. And standing next to me is Mohammed Ali. A man who's authored an outstanding record in the ring. Petulant, truculent by nature. Champ, let me ask you, how do you feel about yourself at this time, 35 years into your young life? I'm the greatest. Ain't nobody as bad as me. I want the ball. I want that son of this guy. I can hold back. I want to the crazy little winner. Joe's from the ball and got I'm my own black man in history. Won my title three times. I say this. I took my own damn home because I'm free. I'm going to say this to you, Howard. He's always making fun of me on TV, saying this, saying that. I wrote this poem about you, Howard, and it goes like this. Roses are red. Violets are blue. Leon Spinks is ugly, but not as ugly as you. Muhammad Ali and Woody Hayes, two of my favorite fighters. <laughs> Anyhow, oh, I love Beretta. Beretta, everything is so dramatic. He could even have a dramatic scene with his pet bird, Fred. I love you, man. Whatever gets you to tonight, and you can take that to the bank. I love you, man, but the heat's coming down. Now the heat's coming down, and you've been acting weird, Fred. I don't know what's the matter with you, man. Done everything I can to make you happy. I changed my t-shirt, I got your new cage. What else could you possibly want, man? Cocaine! <laughs> they say those cockatoos are expensive. Well, this one's sort of an audience participation impression, so if you will, give me one of those fantastic round of applauses for the incredible Bob Hope! Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, this is Bob, 75 years old Hope, and I want to tell you, hey, how about that rich little Indy up, huh? Bozo the clone. No, but I want to tell you, hey, I was at the Academy Awards this year, didn't win anything. 
I understand I'm going to get my award in uh, November. Yeah, they said it'd be a cold day. <laughs> How about that Phyllis Diller? Isn't she something, huh? I'll tell you, she's homely. Yeah, she's so homely that when she was born, the doctor slapped her mother. <laughs> Listen, I got a new theme song. I'd like to sing it for you now. Ready? Thanks for the millions. I bought a lot of land, San Fernando and Japan. <laughs> Damn, Sony. <laughs> you know, I, uh, I was thinking about one uh, personality that a commercial really made popular. The incredible Yule Gibbons. Hi, I'm Yule Gibbons. You know, a lot of people don't realize how many edible parts are heir to a pine tree. Take, for example, this little squirrel. <laughs> well, I'd like to sing a song for you. But instead, I'm going to do some dog sounds. Hoist an old dog early in the morning. <laughs> dog with a flea. on a flea. for trouble. Cat and dog meet on that same street early in the morning.
what a future he's got. Ah, oh, he's insane. Yeah, back the wagon up now, will you? He's through. <laughs> uh, that was Frank Welker. Boy, he does those TV voices so perfectly. Fred Silverman just called and canceled him. <laughs> you know, one thing I found out is that everybody likes to do impressions. Husband and wives arguing, mimic each other. Children imitate their parents, which is a great way to get spanked. Everybody has at least one famous person they can imitate, good or bad. Now you take this room. Somebody, please. <laughs> no. Uh, I'll bet you in this room, I would say there's probably, well, two or three hundred good impressions. Let's find out. Let's... Who would like to do an impression? Anybody here? Yeah. Hi. Hi. What's your name? Jim Moniz. Who do you do, Jim? Uh, Andy Kaufman. He's the guy that plays Latka on the Taxi series. Okay. Could you stand up and do it? Sure. <clears throat> Mr. Lito, is it okay if I can do some impressions for you? I have been studying very hard, and I can do John Wayne for you. Okay. You sure I won't embarrass you? Not at all. Okay, Pilgrim, get down from that horse. <laughs> well, congratulations. You win a surefire system to win roulette, written on the back of Howard Hughes' will. Congratulations. <laughs> We have some big prizes today, gang. Who else would like to do an impression? Yeah. A double? Can you come out of there? Oh, I got to give you two prizes. Okay, just turn around there. Okay, what are your names? This is uh, Cynthia Criswell. Cynthia. And Lee Shale. Okay, Cynthia and Lee, who you got? We have uh, Mae West and W.C. Fields. We're going to try it. Hey, big boy. Uh, is that a pistol in your pocket, or are you just glad to see me? <laughs> let's, let's see you follow that. <laughs> well, hello there, Jello. Call me Jello. Cause you're easy to make. Okay. Okay, oatmeal. Well, why'd you call me oatmeal? Cause I know you'll be done in a minute. <laughs> Great. You two win. A recently discovered map that shows the hidden location of a gas station open on Sunday. Who else? Who else does an impression? Anybody else? Do you do anybody, little girl? Oh, I think you're disgusting. <laughs> Wait a minute, let me guess. No, that was great. That was great. Yeah, terrific. You know, she, you look a little like, uh, what, what's her name? You see her on TV all the time. Um, what? Duncan, Sandy Duncan. Anybody ever tell you you look like Sandy Duncan? No, Sandy Dennis. I hear that a lot. <laughs> do you do uh, Sandy Duncan? Very well. <laughs> That's very true. She does do it very well. Sandy Duncan.
Congratulations, Sandy. You have won <laughs> a lock of Howard Cosell's hair from the toupee of your choice. <laughs> Thank you, Sandy. Let's see. Who else have we got here? Anybody else do voices? Hi. Do you do any impressions? I do a few cartoon voices. Cartoon voices, good. Uh, how many do you do? Ah, uh, let's see, a hundred and seventeen. Hundred and seventeen. Could we uh, have a, a couple of dozen? Uh, yeah. Okay, I just happen to have some here. It's Richie Little. <laughs> oh, I'll have you, skinny old maid. Come here a second. Richie Little's here. <laughs> oh, she just uh, uh, like to see you. Uh, just stick around. <laughs> Richie Little, oh, I just adore big strong man. Oh, I just love muscles. Have you got any? Mm, little. Oh, oh, he, 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 Somebody looking for a rabbit, my boy. He, 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 let's see if this is a rabbit coming. Okay, uh, Bert, come over here. Uh, let's see. Uh, somebody's looking for a rabbit, Bert. Ernie! Ernie, Ernie, we're not rabbits, Ernie. Okay, Bert, uh, I guess we're not rabbits. Let's see if uh, this looks like a rabbit, Bert. Yeah, this looks like a rabbit over here. Oh, I'm not a rabbit, I'm Big Bird. Hi. Hey, 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 do you know what I can do? Uh, an impression of a sneeze. Do you want to hear me? Yeah, okay. One, two, three. Ah, uh, gee, I think I lost my sneeze. Has anybody seen a little yellow sneeze around? Oh, gee, I can't do it. But maybe Mr. Snuffleupagus can. Well, 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 what the hell is going on here? Oh, Mr. Snuffleupagus, could you sneeze for us? Okay, bird. <laughs> oh, that was just lovely. Yeah, that was terrific. Okay, uh, let's see. Look who's coming. Uh-oh. It's a, it's a, I think it's a cookie monster. Somebody say cookie. You got cookies? Is that Cookie? Wait, Cookie under here? Cookie! Ah! Hey, look at a nice mess for me. It's Oscar, yeah, I've been in the can all day. Oh boy, I like these goodies. Well, I guess that's about it. So as Popeye would say, I'm strong to the finish because I eat me spinach. I'm Popeye the sailor man. Popeye! Oh, fantastic. Well, you have won a certificate. Good for 12 hours of training at the Las Vegas Animal Obedience School. Your pet will be taught how to sit, beg, and sing like Jerry Vale. That was fantastic. Isn't he good? Oh. Oh. Uh, by the way, what, what's your name? Fred. Fred. Uh, do you, uh, I mean, is there anybody else in your family that uh, does impressions? Uh, I have a brother. Oh, who's your brother? You are. Fred! We wondered what happened to you after the war. How are your legs? Oh, okay. 
Hey, Fanta... No, this is my brother Fred, and I'm very proud of him. The best in cartoon voices, Fred Little! <laughs>